It's been one month since getting my hands on both the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max and we are definitely in a space where all quote unquote new smartphones are just incrementally better than the year before but that's not exactly a bad thing and there are things about Apple's latest flagships that are still new and noteworthy. And as many of you are likely in the research stage to figure out which phone is going to be the right one for you, going into 2024, I thought I'd put together this comprehensive review of the iPhone 15 Pros, going over their various pros and cons, all in an effort to help you be as informed as possible. And the first area that I want to start off with is design and form factor. This is one area where the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max share a lot of similarities with previous generations, but also some interesting key differences. From a dimension standpoint, there's no differences to be found as it maintains the same sizes since the debut of the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max. They have 6.1 and 6.7 inch displays, but both phones do have slightly reduced bezels than before that you're really only going to be able to notice if you have them side by side with an older model. From a form factor standpoint, again, it's virtually the same as what the iPhone 12 Pro ushered in, but with some key differences. The main one here, of course, is going to be build material. Rather than going with stainless steel for the frame, you get titanium on the iPhone 15 Pro. It seems to be Apple's new favorite metal for the here and now. Now, this does two things. Number one, it provides a brush finish to the frame, a welcome change of pace from the highly reflective polished finish the older models have. It reinforces the industrial aesthetic Apple has been going for without making the iPhone lose any glitz or luxury appeal. It's not as fingerprint resistant as you think it's going to be though, especially on the darker variant, so keep that in mind, but the smudges are not as bad as before. Now, the other thing this switch to titanium does is make the iPhone significantly lighter in weight. It's one of the first things you're going to notice once you get the phone into your hands. This is one of those changes that you start to appreciate the longer that you actually use the device. One month later, this is so much more comfortable to hold and use compared to my iPhone 14 Pro Max. Yes, some people are going to say they like the heft that the older models have as it makes it feel more solid in the hand. And though I agree that I do like the feel, a heavier phone does start to get fatiguing when actually using the phone for extended periods of time. Now, the last thing to note when talking form factor, though, it may be difficult to notice with your eyes. The frame on the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max is slightly rounded at the edge, so it's not as sharp to hold when comparing with the completely squared off frames of the previous generations. And this does pair nicely with the reduced weight to provide for an overall more comfortable user experience. One month later, using the 15 Pro Max is noticeably not as taxing as previous years. And even though you may not be able to detect any noticeable changes with just your eyes, the experience in the hand is more changed than what you'd expect. Now, when it comes to new additions, it's important to note that these new iPhones come equipped with USB Type-C ports, something you're definitely going to forget if you've been using iPhones up to this point, as you will accidentally try and plug in an old lightning cable many, many times. Though it does add some new functionality, it doesn't really change the look or feel of both phones. But there is a new action button above the volume rocker that replaces the old silent switch. It can be mapped out to carry out a function of your choice, including silencing your phone, which is the default action. One month later, I actually love this thing. I have it mapped to unlock the doors of my Tesla Model 3. It's been super convenient having my phone double as a key fob. Now, before we get into the other components around the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max, I want to take a quick moment to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, ProtoArc. ProtoArc is a company that is dedicated to creating products that enhance the comfort and convenience of daily life, and they make some of the coolest and useful accessories that I use all the time, especially when I travel. I try and keep packing to a minimum when I'm on the move, so it's not uncommon for me to only bring my iPad with me as it's a super versatile device and the times that I need to get more serious work done, like write a script or reply to some emails, I'll use the ProtoArc XK01 trifold keyboard. This ultra portable Bluetooth keyboard features a convenient trifold design, maximizing space saving capability abilities as you can easily fit this into any side pocket in a backpack. It boasts a full-size layout complete with a full row of function keys and an integrated numeric section, a huge bonus if you're punching in numbers regularly on something like a spreadsheet. The keys are quiet but responsive, you can connect up to three devices via Bluetooth, and it has a whopping five-month standby time on a full charge. And when not in use, you can simply fold it up and tuck it away. It's pretty incredible that this compact little package is a full-size high-functioning keyboard. And it doesn't stop there, if I really need to get some work done on the iPad. In addition to the keyboard, I'll use ProtoArc's 2-in-1 hub mouse. This is an extremely well-made, ultra-comfortable mouse that can connect to your device via Bluetooth. This thing is super useful if I need to zoom around iPad OS with precision. It too can connect up to three devices, can last around two months on a full charge, and unlike any other mouse I've seen, look what's nestled inside here in the back. It comes with a USB-C hub that gives you access to a USB Type-C and a USB-A port, as well as a full-sized HDMI port. I can't tell you how clutch a hub like this is when you're out traveling doing client work, especially when you're rocking something like an iPad that has some seriously limited I.O. and it's super convenient that it just tucks into the ProtoArc mouse so you never misplace it. 
If you guys are interested in the ProtoArc keyboard or the 2-in-1 hub mouse, ProtoArc is hooking you guys up with an early Black Friday sale. Just click the link in the description and use code 25GSLREVIEW and you'll get 25% off your order for a limited time only. Don't limit yourself with the tools you need when you're on the move. Check out ProtoArc today. Now when it comes to hardware, let's first start with displays. Both the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max are rocking Super Retina XDR OLED panels that perform great. They're sharp and exceptionally bright and both do very well when it comes to viewing HDR content. The new screens are also quite immersive. You do get the relatively new hole punch cutout at the top here, which means both phones are equipped with Dynamic Island. It's a bit of a polarizing feature in it that it's not anything I'd categorize as revolutionary, but it's a very creative software feature that dynamically takes advantage of this dead spot of the screen to give you notifications, keep track of important information, and multitask between open apps. Now you also get Apple's Face ID hardware behind the Dynamic Island as well, still to me the best biometric security system on any phone. It's easy to set up and use to the point where you forget that it's even there, which is a key sign of really good design. But probably the most premium part of the displays is going to be the high refresh rate as both the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max have Apple's ProMotion technology. This allows both devices to take advantage of the silky smoothness of 120Hz, which I gotta say, paired with the general smoothness of iOS, really makes this one of the most buttery UI navigation experiences you can have on a smartphone to date. Plus, because it's a variable refresh rate, you do get to use Apple's Always On Display feature, which, believe it or not, is also relatively new. I'm not the biggest fan of the version where it just slightly dims the entire lock screen. I feel as though it's a bit too distracting and I do have concerns on what it's doing to my battery life, but this version where it only shows the time, widgets, and notifications is a nice to have. Now one month later, when talking usability on a day-to-day -day run and gun basis, I do prefer the regular 15 Pro over the 15 Pro Max. It's just a way more comfortable size that still feels outstanding in the hand and provides more than enough of an immersive and engaging user experience. Now I will say the Max is pretty great on the rare times I'm playing games or watching longer form video on the go. It's nice having that extra screen real estate in this lighter frame, so if you're more of a power user, it's something that you're going to want to keep in mind. Okay, next, let's talk about how the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max perform, something that many of us tech reviewers have been monitoring closely as these phones are equipped with Apple's newest mobile processor, the A17 Pro. In addition to sporting the new Pro moniker, the chip has a new 6-core CPU with two performance and four efficiency cores, a new 6-core GPU, and a new 16-core neural engine. Now, how all of this translates into performance is going to be seen in a lot of different ways. When it comes to everyday use, the iPhone 15 Pros perform great as to be expected, with iOS running smoothly without any lag. Same goes with virtually all the apps, and scrolling through your various social media feeds is absolutely seamless. Mobile gaming is also smooth and jitter-free, even for ones that are quite demanding, and the good thing is iPhones are kind of known to maintain this level of day-to-day -day performance for extended periods of time. Now, all of this is great from a user experience standpoint, but it's going to be quite short-lived if your battery performance isn't up to par, and I'm happy to say that both the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max do well here, with the latter doing exceptionally well in this category. One month later, the regular iPhone 15 Pro has done pretty okay with battery. Nothing outstanding, but also nothing I'd consider below average. I'm getting around 7 hours of screen on time on a full charge, which is fair given the phone's dimensions and specs, and it's enough to get me through a full day without any real issues. The iPhone 15 Pro Max, however, is on a different level. I'm happy to say that the hulkish battery life that the Max was known for is officially back this year, as I'm getting at least a day and a half of battery life on a full charge, close to two on days of light use. This has been such a breath of fresh air as I had so much drama with my battery performance on my iPhone 14 Pro Max and I was worried it might be the same with the 15 this year. Not having to worry about battery life at all when I start the day on a full charge regardless of how hard I'm pushing the phone, it really takes the user experience to the next level. But as always, the ways in which the new A17 Pro is really going to flex its muscles is with its camera performance and man, the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max really have come closer than any other iPhone of the past to maybe warrant the Pro title in its name. Both phones come with four cameras each, with one unexpected difference between the two, that being that the iPhone 15 Pro Max comes with the new 5x telephoto zoom, while the regular has a shorter 3x telephoto camera. Both have LiDAR sensors for better autofocus and low light, both can shoot in RAW, and both can take advantage of Apple's advanced computational photography features. And all of this culminates for some incredible still images. I think Apple may take it this year with best photos coming out of any phone, period. The quality here is top-notch. The colors come off beautiful, both vibrant and accurate, which is hard to do, 
and because of the larger main sensor, the natural depth of field you can get with this phone makes for some amazing looking photos. Now one month later is the 5x telephoto zoom on the Pro Max a differentiator that makes it a better choice than the regular 15 Pro. The short answer is no in my opinion. It's a nice focal length to have that I do like better than the 3x zoom, but it's not the best performing camera especially in low light, so I wouldn't go spending the extra dollars for it just yet. And this might seem like a small thing, the shutter lag on the iPhone's camera app is the least problematic on any smartphone I've tested by a big margin. You can go to town on that shutter without skipping a beat, and it's a good illustration of the A17 Pro's horsepower. The same goes with how smooth the camera app switches between cameras. The transitions are seamless, a stark difference from most of the competition out there, and again, testament to the A17's strength. But the real gun show with the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max is going to come with its video capabilities. Apple continues to dominate in this area, and they definitely aren't putting their foot off the pedal here. The standard 4K video this phone could produce is stunning. I mean, just look at how well this footage manages sharpness, stabilization, colors, and dynamic range. It's truly exceptional and really effortless to get. You just gotta press record and that's all. But as these phones bear the Pro name, Apple debuted the ability to shoot in ProRes Log, a feature that is usually reserved for high-end cinema cameras. Log footage basically doesn't have a picture profile attached to it, hence why the video has this milky flat look, but in turn, it's loaded with a ton of digital data so that you can color grade the footage in post with a wider range of flexibility to fit a particular look you're going for. Now, as cool as this is for a camera nerd like me, one month later, I'm just gonna be straight up and say that this feature really shouldn't be seen as a big reason to upgrade. Grade. And I say it that way because shooting in log requires that you have the tools necessary to color grade as well as the skills. Plus, even though the iPhone 15 Pro can handle the processing demands associated with shooting in log, which is pretty staggering, it takes up a crazy amount of storage on your phone. In fact, in order to shoot in ProRes 60 frames per second, you need to connect the iPhone 15 Pro to a super fast external SSD. And again, as cool as that is, all of this is really impractical and not really useful for the average Joe. This is especially true as the regular non-log 4K video is already so freaking good and exponentially easier to obtain, it really makes this Pro feature one you're likely never going to use. And that brings us to the last and rather important topic surrounding the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max, and that of course is the price. There's a bit of a larger separation between these two this year as the regular 15 Pro starts at the well-established $999 US, while the 15 Pro Max has a new starting price of $1199. It's not a baseless price increase per se, as the $999 price tag on the regular Pro is for the 128GB model, while the base level Pro starts at $256, so it's still technically aligned to its old pricing model. That said, if you're looking for advice on which one to go with, if Having a more comfortable phone that's easier to hold and carry around is important to you. Just go with the regular 15 Pro. It's, to me, the perfectly sized device that's still beautifully put together, that's still going to give you enough screen real estate and battery life for your day-to-day -day needs. Plus, it has virtually all the same features as its larger brother, so it's better value in my opinion when comparing between the two. Now, if you are a bona fide power user that's on their phone a lot, the Pro Max is going to give you the best battery life, and that alone is likely going to be something that makes it worth it. Again, I don't want to make it seem like there's an issue with the battery battery life on the regular 15 Pro, there really isn't. It's just that the 15 Pro Max's battery life is so insanely good that if you're needing that level of support, it may be worth shelling out the extra dollars. But let me know what you guys think. If you had to choose between the two, which phone would you go for and why? The iPhone 15 Pro or the 15 Pro Max? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you guys missed my review of the regular iPhone 15 lineup and the new Google Pixel 8 Pro, check them out here. They're going to help you be as informed as possible.